morning. God's blessings to you and your families. And allow me to say Happy New Year to you and your family, your friends, your loved ones, your neighbors. We want to praise God and give him all the glory and the praise that is due only unto his name. It is he who have brought us thus far. It is he who have protected us and covered us with under his wings and under the bloodstained banner of Prince Emmanuel. Today we are back with Pastor Scorner, where we would like to share with you the word of God. would like to share with you the word of truth. So therefore, we ask, as we share with you, as we pray with you, as we glorify God's name together, I ask that you please share the link with a loved one. Share the link with a brother or a sister. Share the link with somebody. Invite somebody to come today to listen, to view, and to share with us. Today we have indeed a power-packed program planned with you in mind. Today we are discussing America in prophecy. And we have with us two guests, which I will introduce to you um, in a while. And they will guide us in the discussion of America in prophecy. Can we find the United States of America in prophecy? Can we um, find through the Bible a country like that so powerful um, in prophecy? What does prophecy say about America? Actually, does prophecy have anything to say about America today? We will see this today. We will unearth this. And we ask that you would share with somebody because somebody needs to hear what the pastors have to share this morning. But before we go any further, we depend upon God for wisdom. Because as ministers of the gospel, we know and understand that spiritual things are spiritually minded and spiritually discerned. We understand that we cannot understand the Bible except the author of the Bible reveals his, the meaning from those secret pages. So this morning, we will ask Pastor Palmer to pray for us as we begin. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, our Redeemer and our King, we thank you once again for your saving grace upon our lives. And as we continue along the pathway of looking at topics from the Holy Word, we ask that the Holy Spirit will help us so that things can be clear and someone out there can come to know you and accept you. So we ask for loving God that the Spirit will be with us at this time. Bless us and all those out there who are viewing and who are listening. I pray, oh God, that you will touch them and help them to comprehend something and make a transformation in, the, in their lives. We thank you and we praise you for your grace in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor um, Palmer, for this prayer. Um, remember that um, Pastor's Corner is live every um, Tuesday at 11.30, and we rebroadcast in the evening. So please um, share the news. Um, share the information because we are going down deep into scripture as we discuss the word of truth. Just before um, I introduce to, with, um, to you today um, our panelists and those pastors chosen to be with us this morning, I would like to welcome um, Denise George. Thank you so much for joining us. Arlene um, Hospod, thank you so much. We have um, Stedlin Isaac, thank you so much. We have Corian um, Cotton, thank you so much. Glenda Nicholas, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And the others who would have joined us, thank you so much. Um, just give us, share a message in the chat section so we'll see um, your messages. Um, if you have questions, feel, feel free um to um ask your questions and i will um route them through our 
our panelists this morning. Sister Ruth Pursue, um, welcome, and God's blessings um, to you. So again, saints of God, um, share the message, share the message, um, and share a ch um, give us a message in the chat, ask your questions, and our panelists would um, answer them. If we can't answer them today, we will try our best under God to do so some other time. We have Jamie St. Louis. Jamie, welcome. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, Mar um, Maria, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, God's blessings um, to you. This morning, saints of God, we have two handsome gentlemen in the house, um, well known to the Grenadian populace. Um, however, um, those who are not um, Grenadian, or you may have, you may be Grenadian and out for a while and may not know them, or you may have forgotten one, um, because maybe you thought he would have some gray hair now, but he has no gray hair whatsoever. Well, I'm seeing one or two. <laughs> um, the, the individual sitting um, right next to me, immediately close to me, um, is Pastor Enoch Isaac, a senior pastor within the Grenadian, um, Grenadian Conference, a man full of wisdom, poise, a man who God has blessed and presently he serves as the ministerial um secretary the pa the one who pastors the pastors um he serves as also men's ministries as well as religious liberty um pastor isaac thank you so much for joining us this morning and we appreciate your presence and your wisdom this morning um we have saints of God um, next to him, to his left, we have Pastor um, Kimi Delano Palmer, an intern pastor within the Grenada Conference. Actually, he's an intern pastor with the Snell Hall or Northeastern District. Also, Pastor Palmer serves as the auditor of the conference. That is the internal um, auditor. Am I correct, Pastor? Correct. All right. Thank you so much. So we have Pastor um, Kimi um, Palmer. So this morning we have seniority mixed with with um, youthfulness, and that blend would um, we have a good blend this morning as we spend some time discussing America in prophecy. Alicia Stevens, um, thank you, Stephen. Thank you for joining us, um, Veronica. Um, Oh, thank you so much um, for joining us. And um, the others who are there sh um, sharing with us in our chat, we really appreciate your presence. And let's chat with us. We, we like when you, when you chat um, with us this morning. Um, just before we enter um, the discussion and we open up this this discussion, America in Prophecy, we will just break for um, a special item of music from a pastoral family, Pastor Gittens and family this morning. So enjoy this um, special item of music with us as we praise God together. I'm satisfied Touch me low, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city, where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one. Yeah. 
I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. I was just basking in this wonderful um, item of music. Actually, I think it is not only fitting for the program, but it's fitting for the times in which we are living. A time of such uncertainty. Um, a time where persons, um, it's so much pain losing your loved ones. A, a time where, you know, Persons are not too sure what are happening. But as Christians, we uh, have the hope uh, that we have a mansion, a robe, and a crown. And, and one of those days, we shall um, meet our Savior. Um, Nadia Francis, um, good morning. Alicia Stephen again. Veronica, um, th thank you. Um, Pastor Samora Bess, you are in the house. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Jacqueline Scott, um, thank you. Denise George, Sister George, thank you so much for joining us. And Ashanti, thank you. Now this morning, let us go into our, our discussion um, this morning. I will um, allow the um, young pastor to begin the batting. All right, um, just using a cricket term, please begin the batting. Pastor, what exactly does the term prophecy means? What exactly does the term prophecy mean? Well, it's a good place to start for we speaking about prophecy, America and prophecy. So we will give you, I'll give you an idea in terms of to define the, the word prophecy. Prophecy sp speaks about prediction. And to make predictions, to make inspired, I want to say inspired declarations of what is to come. So right there, I'm speaking about future. To speak, and also um, with prophecy, there is a prophet, and you act as a mediator between God and man, and you are foretelling what will come. So I want to say that prophecy can be seen as a manifestation of God's power in glorifying his person, glorifying him, and exalting his redemptive work in Christ, and setting forth the divine character of his, of his revealed word. So prophecy is speaking about his revealed word, the Bible, and that is key as we begin this discussion. Yes, indeed. And I think, Pastor, you have set um, the good foundation on what is is prophecy. Just want to ask um, Pastor Isaac quickly. Um, Pastor Palmer have defined what prophecy is. Um, but do you see prophecy being important um, for the church and for the world today? Thank you, Pastor Isidro, and good morning to everyone for joining us. Um, yes to your question. Um, I, I agree, first of all, with Pastor Palmer. Prophecy deals with predictions, yes? Um, um, and therefore, biblical prophecy would relate to biblical predictions um, that, that I would say shall come to pass. Um, there is no if or but about it. It's, it's biblical prophecy. It shall come to pass. It's not someone saying something and it may come to pass. So it, it, it really deals with statements um, that are foretold in the Bible and will come to pass. And um, you're asking, is it important? Of course. Um, for us to have a glimpse as to what the future holds, 
Now, obviously, I'm not referring to palm reading and that kind of thing, yes? Um, people go by certain persons. They say, I'm going to see all my light burning. No, prophecy is not that. Prophecy is God's word. God speaking to biblical prophecies um, is God speaking through his prophets to give us insights as to what the future holds. Because we don't know. We know about history, what has happened, and what is currently taking place. We can speak to it. But we do not know what the next hour holds. What the next 10 minutes, we don't know that. You know? So prophecy tells us that. What's the next 10 years, 20 years? What's going to happen? So it's important. Um, um, prophecy is very important in that respect because it gives us insight as to what shall happen, what will happen based on the, um, the, the, the knowledge of God. Amen. So therefore, Pastor, based upon what you have shared, if prophecy were checked, it if biblical prophecy were checked, it would not bounce. No, at all. It, it cannot bounce um, because you're dealing with God's word. All right. Yes, God, God's word stands forever. It, it, it is not someone getting up and saying, I have a dream, and, and this will happen, and the time passes, and nothing happens. No, what, what God says will happen, will happen. I mean, that's it. You know, you, you, as folks say, you, if God tells you, you're having something to cook, you can put your water on fire. Something will come in the pot. That's God. <laughs> right. right? So, yes, biblical prophecy is sure. We have a more sure word of prophecy, says the Apostle Peter. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is, I mean, as sure as anything else. Um, um, it shall happen. It will happen. All right. That's Good. biblical prophecy. So thank you so much. And somebody saying, correct, Pastor. Correct, Pastor. All right. So, with this understanding, I will ask another question. And it is, are you aware of, because remember, we're speaking about America in prophecy. Mm -hmm. All right. America in prophecy. So, pastors, are you aware of any biblical-based prophecy directly pointing to the United States of America? Well, of course. The Word of God is very clear. Yes, there is um, biblical-based prophecies pointing to America. However, in the book of Daniel, which also speak heavily about prophecy. Um, in Daniel, for instance, chapter 8 and verse 20 and verse 21, you can follow there. It gives you definite in light of it make mention to, 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 to Greece and to Media Portia and stuff. But many times the Bible also uses in prophecy um, symbolic representation. So you may not find the word America written um, definely in, in the Bible. But prophecy speaking in terms of using characteristics and stuff that will bring out um, what we're speaking about. So, of course, in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, make good reference. And, and we, we will discuss that in light of America in prophecy coming from the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 11. That is the, the chapter and that is the verse that pinpoints as we move forward. From 11 on to verse 17, the idea about America in prophecy. All right, Pastor Isa. Yes, I would, uh, I would want to support Pastor Palmer in this. Um, you, you will find, but I, as he said, I want to hasten to add, like someone looking for Babylon, the word Babylon, someone looking for Rome, someone looking for Medo-Persia, in the Bible you'll find it. However, if someone is on a trip, a biblical um, hike, as I would say, looking for America, the United States of America. No, you wouldn't find it. Um, so, yes, there is biblical passages pointing to, but you would not find the name America. Therefore, one has to ask the Holy Spirit and use um, the biblical meaning, the symbolism that the Bible points out as uh, allusion was made to Revelation chapter 13 and verse 11. There we find, um, we'll get into it, the rise of a nation, a power, a kingdom, and, and um, all, all roads points to the United States of America. So I'm saying, if you open your Bibles, um, you would not find the United States of America. You would not find the U.S. You wouldn't find uh, America. But, but of course, when we, one begins to study the Word of God and understand the prophecies fort foretold, um, the conclusion has to be um, pointing to the United States of America. All right, all right. Now, um, those of you viewing now, please call your auntie, your, shall we say, your nene, your power. Call everybody because 
the pastors are telling us this morning that we cannot find the word or the term America, but they will show us through scripture the characteristics that lead to America. So let's see the pastors do that um, this morning. So um, turn your Bibles with us to the book of Revelation. Revelation is the last book in the New um, Testament. Revelation chapter 13, and we'll consider verse 11. Because we really want the pastors, the two pastors this morning, to show us the characteristics of, um, of America in um, Scripture. And I read, and it says, And I beheld an other beast coming up out of the earth, and he, he had two horns like a lamb, and he sp spake as a dragon. Um, Pastor, I think we, I should read that again. It says, And I beheld an other beast coming up out of the earth, and had two horns like a lamb, and spake like a dragon. All right? So, pastors, you are telling me that this is the would characterize um, America. Now, let, before we go deep and you share more with us, I would like to know that in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, right? We hear of a beast coming up. All right? And we hear that beast having two horns. Am I correct? Correct. And how does that beast speak? It speaks like a what? Like a dragon. It speaks like a dragon. Finally. Lamb-like and then dragon. All right. So, which nation? Now, we, we're talking about American prophecy. But which nation would have come up um, around the time when the papacy received its deadly wound? And um, allow, uh, allow you to maybe use history to guide us in that direction. Pastor um, Isaac? Sure. Thank you so much, Pastor Isidro. Um, and, and that's where, you know, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to guide our thoughts and our thinking. Because as was said, you wouldn't find America there. But yeah, um, as you said, Pastor, we, we must first, because you said um, which nation um, rose, uh, came to um, prominence right. during the time the papacy was receiving its deadly wound. So I think I want to begin by identifying what is the papacy. I mean, because we must know, we, we, must, we must have a full understanding of, of what the papacy is all about. And therefore, the papacy, I would say to us that the papacy is the, the authority, the, the, the office of the Pope of Rome, the, the pontiff, yes? So you're asking me which nation came to prominence when the office of the, the Pope of Rome was diminishing. Uh, you know, is not so? So, um, a little history tells us, it, you know, in 538 um, AD, in 538 AD, the papacy, well, um, came to, to, to real power. Because in 538 AD, um, pagan Rome gave way to papal Rome. That is, the the emperors of Rome gave way to the bishops of Rome. So, so the governance of, of, of the then world um, came under the church. Yes, so the papacy came to prominence. And, and, um, and no longer do we, we, we you know, the, the emperors had power. They were there, but not powerful. Who were powerful was the pope, the popes. Yeah, and um, that power just um, increased. And, and just just got I mean they got very um, extremely strong so powerful that in 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 1076 um, AD the Gregory the seventh who was of course the, the 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 Pope at that time he issued an edict um, to the the citizens of Germany that they instructing them that they should not follow the Emperor the words of the Emperor um, that was Henry, Henry the, the fourth, and and the bishop was saying that sorry, the pope was saying to the citizens of Germany um, that the 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 king or the emperor needs to repent. Now, don't you follow me, pastor? The 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 
the bishop, the pope, at the time was saying to the, the citizens of Germany, and, and naturally, King Henry IV was, a, was, was indeed the, the most pronounced, um, well-known, renowned um, leader at that time. And the Pope was saying to the citizens, don't follow what he, whatever he says, because he needs to repent. He has not repented. A year after that, the bishop, um, the king, the emperor, made his, his, um, his journey to Canosa in the Alps in Italy. Well, of course, that's, that's cold, yes? Um, seeking the forgiveness of, of the Pope. The Pope had the emperor stand in the snow for three days without coming out to see him. Three days barefooted. Three days bareheaded. Yes? And the snow was falling. Until that he actually was making penance past them. Until the king, the Pope eventually came out and um, offered his forgiveness. No, I, I, why did I use that? I used that to, to show you that that um, the, the back back then the popes were very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were extremely they were extremely powerful, and um, but that didn't last for for long, because in 1798, um, a French general um, known by the name of Alexander Bautier took the pope then pious captive. Yes, um, so the the the, the power that the 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 papers he had um began to wane after the Pope was taken captive. Of course a year after that he died. Um so I gave the history. Which nation passed them? Which nation came to prominence during that time? Right. I, I'm saying there is only one nation that rose of I mean you know um of any prominence that made any um, Mark on the world stage, there's only one nation that came to prominence during that time, and that nation was the United States of America. Clearly, in, in 1798, America was indeed a world power. Yes? So, so when the Bible says that, I mean, the, the question you asked me, which nation came? I'm saying the only nation that came to prominence around that time when the, 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 the papacy's power was diminishing was that of the United States of America. There isn't a next nation that I know of. And historians and um, persons who there or you out there can can check it out and let us know if you find another nation that, that came to prominence um as 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 powerful as as that of the United States. Um there is none, of course, but of course if someone has it, I am happy to <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. Yes. Uh, Pastor Palmer, do you have another nation? Well, I would love to hear if there <laughs> an, if there is a next one. All right. Good, um, good, the, good. There, there is, according to the word of God, it's very clear that this is the nation. All right. This is the nation. And, and, and Pastor Isaac has shared with us the extensive history. And he is sharing that. And Pastor Palmer is agreeing that based upon history, there's no other nation that came up to prominence around that time. No, not at all. As I, you know, just to add, Pastor, um, America declares its independence in 1776 um, and um, um, adopted its Bill of Rights in 1791. So I'm mean, saying around that period, there was only one nation that was coming to prominence. And, and that same nation then, today, is indeed the most powerful nation in the world. So, so it's not that it came up then, back then, in, in the um, 1800s, and then it win. It came to prominence then, and today. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when we were younger, we talked about the world superpowers. We talked about Russia and America. Now we talk about this superpower, the United States of America. You know, China making some noise on the side there, but that, that, that is not to be, to, be con to, to be concerned, really. America is indeed undoubtedly the only world superpower. All right. All right. Yes. N n now, Pastor, you shared the history about um, America coming up into prominence. But when I read as well, um, Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, it tells me, And I beheld an other beast coming out of the earth. What does that mean? Um, because America came, in, came um, into prominence, you said, in the 1800s, right? Um, but does America's prominence 
the way they came into prominence, does it fit into that? Into um, the beast coming out of the earth? Or does it fit to the beast coming out of the sea? Um, how does it fit into there? What is the significance of the beast coming out of the earth? Um, and how does America fall into this? Well, just to give it the, some backup text as we explain the, the, the point of the Bible um, in um, verse 11, as a beast coming up out of the earth, out here is the key word, to give some backup text. Um, in the book of Re Revelation, that's where we are staying, um, chapter 13 and verse, and verse 1, it says here, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, keyword, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So we are seeing here that there was the first beast that came from the sea. And 11 now making a, making a link that here's a, a second beast that is coming out from the earth. Um, we are saying that from the first point that um, the first beast in, from the sea speaks about Europe where there was much people. So sea in prophecy speaking about much people. I can give you um, a backup text um, in the same book of Revelation chapter um, seven, um, 17 right, and Pastor, we go on to us, verse to 15, us. right? Mm -hmm. 17 and verse 15. Um, giving you, as we explain, waters and, and earth. Um, verse 15 says, and chapter 17 and verse 15, and he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whole sit, um, sitted of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So that text here, given much clarity, that, that, that see, um, speak about people and multitude and, and stuff. But no, but as in ver in 13, which are we on America, mention about earth. And earth there is the opposite of sea. So 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 now we see earth as in as in not so populated. So America coming from a place that is not so pop, um, populated as the first beast rising from the sea, which in terms of multitude of people. So one is in terms of Europe, in terms of all these nations they were they, they were they were in a multitude, and then we are into um, America coming up from the earth. All right, Pastor, thank you. Now, um, people, I'm asking you please to share the link. I mean, this is solid information, solid Bible study this morning. So share the link. Invite a friend. Invite a loved one. Let them know what we are studying this morning. Um, and please write down the text when. Um, the pastor shared it with you so that you now can go and study for yourself. The Bible says to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. Let's move on to Pastor Isaac. Yes, yes, Pastor, thanks. Um, I'm totally in agreement with Pastor Palmer there. Um, just to strengthen his point, uh, to reiterate, um, in contrast to verse 1 of Revelation 13 and verse 11, two beasts, one coming up, as he said, from the sea, and Revelation 17, um, 15, saying clearly what is the meaning, sea, not literal, yeah, meaning people, yes? Um, but this beast, this beast which we have identified, beast, by the way, I think we said earlier on, just in case we didn't, means power. Whenever we study in prophecy, Daniel and Revelation in particular, it does, it's not literal. So when the Bible talks about a beast, it's talking about a power, an authority that is coming, coming to establish itself. So this beast or this power that is coming up um, at that time in Revelation um, um, 13 and 11 is coming up from the earth, as Pastor Pama did say, coming up from an unpopulated area. And sure enough, the American nation um, was not born in the populated um, cities or, or, or area of Europe or any other part of the world. It came up on a um, sparsely populated area, the continent, the North American continent, sparsely po um, populated. We know about the Pilgrim Fathers and and um, and the um, the pr those who who uh, who first travelled from the the, the then known world to um, this area for rescue, as it were. They formed the first citizenry, as it were, and established the nation um, of America from 
from the earth. That is, from a, a, a sparsely populated area. Um, again, Pastor, which other nation that came to prominence, um, that, 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 that came out from, as it were, from almost nowhere, we would say, from nowhere. Because, I mean, this was an area of the world that was not known of. And the nation of America was born, yes, from, of course, folks leaving Europe and coming and settling and, and started the nation. So, clearly, um, that, is the, that is the understanding or the interpretation thereof of that passage coming up from the earth, the beast coming up from the earth, not a literal beast coming out from the ground, um, a nation coming up from an unpopulated area of, of the world at that time. All right, all right. Now, Pastor Ziola almost convinced me that uh, that is America. So, uh, the first attribute, I'm convinced of it. Okay. Um, first attribute. But there's a second thing that is coming there that I need the two of you to share with us, with me and the viewers and the listeners, so I could see how does that fall with America. The second attribute says, and he had two horns like a lamb. I mean, how can a country have um, two horns um, as a lamb. What does these two horns symbolize? Two horns, but there's no crown. What does that symbolize? What does that say um, to us? Yes, Pastor. You know, Daniel, again, we, 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 we did say that um, prophecy is symbolic. Uh, it's different from reading Genesis and Exodus. All yes? Right. Mm -hmm. Reading history and what has, you know, what, it, what took place. No, it's prophecy. What is to take place. And therefore, the Bible has to interpret itself. So the Bible says in, in um, the Bible gives us that clarity in Daniel 7, um, 24, that horns represent kings and kingdoms and governments. Okay. So he has two horns. Remember, the beast is not literal. It's a, it's a power. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nation that is coming up, and he has two horns. And horns represent kingdoms of governments. So the American nation has two branches of government to representation it was it was built it was established in these two principles we can say um republicanism that is a government without a king without a monarch okay um protestantism that is um a church without a pope yes civil and religious liberty mm -hmm. that's that's the foundation of the american government i mean the 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 the, the basis of of that's why today, Pastor, you hear, um, I mean, if you listen for about 20 minutes of any, any talk show or, or, or talking point in America, you'll hear the word rights. Because right. it's enshrined, it's ingrained in the Constitution. So the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment, rights, rights. I mean, everybody talks about rights because that's in, the nation is built on that. Right. So the two horns... And one represents civil liberties, and the other re represents religious liberties. One represents um, the, the, st the, the nature of the government, the republican nature of the government, meaning a government without a king, a government without a, a monarch. And that's why any time a president or any leader decides to act like a king, it's a problem to the Americans because that's not the basis on which the government is formed. So these two branches, um, civil liberties and religious liberties, re the republicans of um, government, government without a king, and also um, a church without a pope. Protestantism. Yes? Oh, wow. Freedom. Even the church of America, you have the church of Satan. Because people are free. They think they're free to do anything really, when it comes to religion. Okay. Yes? All so right. essentially, that's the, the two branches of um, the basis on which the, 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 the constitution of America is laid. Okay. Um, Pastor Palmer, you would like so to add something to that? We want to make it clear. Um, somebody probably might have missed it. So we are saying that two, as the word of God says, two horns, like a lamb. And also, as just to reinforce the point, um, you can look at civil and religious liberty, republicanism and, protest and protestant protestantism, and church and state. And it is um, also very key to note that the Bible say two horns, two horns, and civil and religious in a sense that they are two, Republican and, Protest and Protestant, Protestantism are two, but it is two horns, it is not one horn, and that, that have meaning, because when we um, go back to the book of Daniel, um, Pastor, Daniel um, chapter um, two and verse um, 43, 
um, the pastor can find it for us in the book of Daniel, All right, so um, chapter um, 2 and verse 43. That um, will help us um, to further look at the idea of our two horns. Because in, 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 in that text of Daniel, because Daniel is very um, highly also prophetic, and is making a reference I mean, that about the iron, iron and, and clay. So, Pastor, if you have it, yes, Daniel? it was 2 and verse 43. All mm -hmm. right. So, we're asking our viewers, please turn your Bibles with us as well, because we wanted to share with you uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 43. 43. Mm -hmm. And can I go ahead, Pastor? Sure. And it says, And whereas thou sowest iron mixed with Mary clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So, we are seeing here two horns, right? Iron cannot mix with, with clay. So, we are seeing church and state. And it means, as, as in Daniel, that it is, it is separate and there will not be a mixing. Of course, the text go on to say, speak like he speak, speak as a dragon. But before that was said, the Bible make it clear that two um, horns like a lamb. So it's making a clear distinction. Um, as, as was read in the book of Daniel, I'm unclear. And now we're coming back in terms of um, church and state, republicanism and protestantism. Pastor, I would like to, I, I know we, we, there are a number of things we need to cover. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe we have to have a part two of that <laughs> because it, it's very important, especially what's up, based on what's happening now. I mean, right now, America right. is in the news. Um, yes, just to emphasize the point, it spoke like a lamb. Um, you see, as a dragon. <clears throat> yeah, like the horn is like a lamb, but spoke as a dragon. Right. Um, that is significant. Uh, but, you know, having the horns like a lamb. A lamb is a peaceful, you know, um, um, non-threatening um, animal, contrary to that of a, a, a dragon or, or, well, um, a lion or a tiger, a lamb. Um, when we look at what was happening then, you know, the persons who are believers were fleeing from Europe, oppressive governments, governments that tax its people to uh, maintain a state religion. You know, church and state mix up. The government really, the authority, the kings um, really run the show. And people were moving from this. And that new nation had two horns like a lamb. Very innocent, um, you know, peace-loving um, government. So the United States was established on this, on the tenets that you can come to. You, you have problems in, in, in Ethiopia, you come to America. You have problems in China, you come to America. You have problems in Europe or Iran or... Wherever else, you come to America, you have a problem in Russia, you come to America. On this notion that it's peace-loving, it's, um, you, know, you know, the American dream can be had here. That, that's the tennis on which the American nation was born. Like a lamb. Freedom to worship, to not be told by the government, any government or the state, you should do this or not do this. And that's why, um, up to this point, I probably shouldn't run ahead of myself, but that will change. Because there's another part of the text. But like a lamb means peace-loving, carefree. It seems to have this very innocent aspect of it. So in a false way, though, folks rush to America because the land of what? The free and the brave. That's the tenets on which the nation was built. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. So therefore, we have touched the second attribute or characteristic that, that represents America. But, <laughs> I mean, I've never heard... Um, um, a lamb bellow like a uh, like a dragon. Um, actually, I was told that if um, um, a lamb is tied or sheep is tied, um, and it's 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 strangling, it, it won't say a word. But I'm hearing here that it's speak as a dragon. What does that mean? What what does that symbolize? What does that signify? It speak as a dragon. Well, before we fully um, explain that, I want to say that, keep in mind, the book of Re uh, the, the chapter, chapter 13, and keep in mind that um, as we read let, let, let's read, let me read for you uh, uh, um, verse 2 of chapter 13, 
as we explained the idea about um, speak as a dragon, verse two says, and the beast which I saw was like a, like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So what we see here is there is a person on of power because um, that first beast, which is Rome and and and, and people room, a transformed power to America, who at the beginning beg was like a lamb and now begin to speak as a dragon. So at first, everything seems to be okay and all rights and privilege and the foundling fathers and they are developing going somewhere. But keep in mind, behind the scenes is Satan. Behind the scenes is the devil trying to, to use nations and kings to fulfill his purpose. So speak as a dragon um, making, is making reference. No, you see, to, to speak is, 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 is mouth and to speak has reference to passing laws and laws that, that will be passed, those laws will be laws that, will be, that, that, that can or will be laws that to really prosecute. So speak as a dragon, it means um, 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 America in terms of to pass laws. I want to, um, before Pastor Isaac um, com, um, comment, we are in a state of pandemic from last year until this year. And we can see what can happen in terms of America. I pause it because we will, we, we will address that. Okay, yes, of course, I am. Um, I agree fully with Pastor Pamo. Um, and, and let's let's keep in mind, Pastor Isidro, the the word didn't say it, it was a lamb. It had two horns like a lamb. America is uh, someone uh, had it in, in the chat and and a good good description. America is like wolf in sheep clothing. Yes, that's the nature of America. It has a false presentation of itself. It gives the impression that you can do anything or be here because it, that's the idea. It's as a lamb. It is not a lamb. It has a horn as a lamb. But it's beginning to speak, will begin to speak as a dragon. And um, I, I probably should say, we saw the turning in our present day. Now, now, by the way, from since the establishment of the nation 220 something years ago, the American nation, this this verse one of this sorry this um verse eleven of America, part B of verse eleven of of sorry of Revelation chapter thirteen, is just beginning to take take effect. Yes, um, I remember September eleven, the president then President George Bush, when um. The destruction of the two towers and the planes flew in the towers. He stood on a rubble heap with a bullhorn. And um, he said to the American nation, we hear you. You know, as president, we've heard you. And then he said to the world, that's America speaking. You have awoken the lion and you can't put her back to sleep. No, America is not never referred to as a lion. America is referred to a lamb. Peaceful, quiet. America goes all over the world trying to make peace with people. The president then said, you have awoken the lion and you can't put her back to sleep. Well, I think America has not gone back to sleep. And since September 11 to this time, it's getting, it's getting worse. America is changing the nature. The Bible is saying that she will begin to speak as a dragon. She's not a dragon, but she's, she's going to speak as one. As Pastor Pama did say, Amer um, a nation speaks through laws. Yes, to know what America says is when Congress meets. Although in the Constitution, of course, it's enacted and enshrined in the Constitution that Congress shall make no law respecting that of a, 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 of worship. Meaning there shall be no legis legislation as to how people should worship. Well, the Bible is predicting that that will change, and someone will say, "Oh, there." Really? I'm, no, that can never happen because freedom of religion. Well, the Bible is that's what they call prophecy, Pastor. The prophecy is predicting that that would change. And if I think 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, somebody might have said no, not not today, because we're slowly seeing the changing of America, how America is changing its nature. Yes. Um, um, the draconian ways, even the, the lockdown, certain laws, that's why they are demonstrating all over because Americans are not, they know that the constitution 
forbade them for, for you know, the governments are making such laws, um, disobeying the state, disobeying governors, because they, as though they're not, even if it's a pandemic and it's for the, for the good, based upon the constitution, you're not supposed to be legislating these things to them. So America is changing its, its very nature and um, it will begin to speak as a dragon. That is, how the dragon speak? A dra the dragon represents Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan is against God. And, and, and the area of, 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 of worship, what has God established where Satan is going against? Of course, God has said many things that the devil is going against. God has said marriage is honorable. The devil said keeping is better. Yeah, that's one. Right. right? But as it relates to worship, yes, God has established his seventh day. God has established his seventh day, Sabbath. And of course, the, 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 enemy, um, the enemy is indicating that he will not go along with what God says. Yes? And the devil, the enemy, the dragon, has established another day. That day is Sunday. Yes? So, so speaking as a dragon, which it indicates to me, as it relates to worship, right now, freedom of worship, you can worship Monday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no day in America. You're free. Even pastor, the church of Satan. Yes? Y yeah, you can have the church. You have the church of Satan. But uh, it, the, 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 the prophecy is saying America will begin to speak as a dragon, meaning America will legislate, make laws in the Congress, ratified, yes, by the Supreme Court, yes, which indicates, which, which says that a stipulated time of worship, so America meaning will change from what now obtains, what it was built or the Constitution states. Yes, which says Congress shall make no law. Well, something will happen and Congress will break that and make a law which stipulates a time of worship, which of course will be contrary to God, what God says, wow. uh, of worship, a day of worship. Wow, Pastor, that's a lot of food and, um, that you have given us this morning. Now, um, those of you who are listening, please, we have a few more minutes, so I need your help. Just type in the chat some of the laws that you think America would have stipulated that has gone against God's God's law. So just um, just um, place in the chat for us. So, uh, Pastor, um, some persons are saying that um, there is coming a time when um, um, America begins to speak like a dragon that um, the saints might be persecuted or um, specific issues will force um, the utilization of the uh, of the death sentence. Do you foresee that happening with um, uh, in this world? Yes. Um, um, Pastor, could you, could you read for us um, verse, verse 12 of, I think that's significant. Mm -hmm. And um, verse, verse, verse 12. That is Revelation chapter 13, Revelation verse 12. Chapter 13, verse 12, and, and verse 13. You probably can read both verses. There. All right. Um, Revelation chapter 13, verse 12, and verse 13. It says, And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, and uh, whose deadly wound was healed. And verse 13 says, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So, yes, I think that's important. That power, that power that was coming up during that, that period, which we have identified as, as, as the American nation, um, the Bible is saying that it will exercise the power of the first beast, the first power, the first kingdom, the first nation. Or which nation is that? We, as Pastor Palmer read in, in, in um, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 2, mm -hmm. that was Rome. That first beast, that first power, that kingdom was Rome. And what did Rome do? Rome legislate, you know, and persecuted the, the Christians. Yes? Um, history records that blood ran down the, during the dark ages, ran down the streets like water. Yes, um, Christians were thrown into the arena for the faith. Um, the arena was a place like you go to a stadium. Um, Christians um, decided to stand for God were placed in the stadium. And then um, what was the joy 
wild animals, um, lions and tigers and other ferocious beasts would be let loose. And the Christians would have to be running from one end of the stadium to the other trying to escape and they would eat them. And that is like, you know, and that would be the, the, the fans in the stadium would be, would be cheering. That's what Rome did. Yes? Persecuting the Christians. You, you, you want to legislate morality. Yes? You want to you, you wanna say, this is how, this is what we want. This is how we want you to worship. Yes? And the Bible is saying that second beast, that second power, will become, will act as the first beast. Just as Rome did it and persecuted people, America would also. So we expect, we're talking about prophecy now, we, what we expect is that America would one day, strange, but that's what the Bible says, would one day legislate, pass laws in its Congress, ratified by the Supreme Court, which says, that you must have a, a day of worship. Of course, the day of worship will not be God's day. Would be another day. Would be the, the beast day. Would be Satan's day, which is Sunday. Sunday will become the day that is established for all. I say all. I mean every, every human being to worship. And America would be the power that would be behind that. Yes, that's what the word of God is saying. It exercises the power of the first beast. The same power, the same legislation, the same persecuting power that Rome had. America will now give life to that. Now, sometimes when you discuss that, you wonder. I mean, if the, if, if the Bible said China would do that, we agree. Say, yeah, China, you know. If you, if you come in, say, if they said Cuba, you say, yeah. If you say Putin or Russia, we say yes. But sometimes we cannot understand. We cannot bring ourselves to, to accept. Can America do that? America of all nations? The Bible is predicting, and that's why it's biblical prediction. The Bible is predicting that this is what will happen. Wow. And, and we have to believe it will happen because, in a sense, we have already started seeing it's happening. America is beginning to legislate um, laws that will take us in, 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 in that direction. Wow, that's that's powerful. And Kathy and Nash is saying Sunday law will become the law of the land. Some persons are saying that the um, United States have already legislated um, gay marriage, and that is against the law of of God. Um, Pastor Palmer. Mm -hmm. Well, the point is, which the point is, is one of worship, and that is the whole key to this thing that the devil is. Is and verse 14 of the same chapter speak about deceiving. Matthew 24 verse 5 speak about de deceiving. And to warn us, so we are going on a point where the lamb light is, is changing into a deceptive nature, always deceptive, and will move on to a dragon. Um, so that is, and that will be done by force, as happened in the dark ages. It will be done by force. Thank you so much. Now, brothers and sisters, those who are here viewing and watching, our time is basically up. So we need to end. Um, Pastor, I think we may have to maybe do a part two. Um, I don't know. We have to discuss it a little more. Um, but I just want to ask, I would call it a million-dollar question, two million-dollar questions. The first one is, how strong and influential, because I've heard a lot of talk today about the United States of America and what they will do. But I want to know, and I'll ask Pastor Palmer to answer first, and then we'll have Pastor Isaac to, you know, conclude it for us with his answer. How strong and influential is the United States of America today? All right? And do you think, I mean, America, like Pastor says, Ella, did put peace everywhere. I wouldn't think they came and put peace in Grenada. <laughs> they put peace everywhere. I mean, this is tough to say about the United States of America. Do you think that the United States of America, based upon its constitution, based upon how she practices things today, do you think that she has the capacity to predict this prophecy? When you look back at world events, it is clear that America had that influence to affect the whole world. Going back to 9-11, as Pastor Isaac raised, when this thing happened with the World Trade Center bombing, we are seeing it happened in America, and flights was disturbed, and even months or even up to today, 
what the, 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 the make the laws and stuff that change the way how you fly and how you travel. And that was because of what America has done from since 9-11. We, we, we are seeing that America have this, this world power dominance and they can they, they speak and you have to listen. It's come like a dragon. If a, if, if, if a, a little puppy make a little song, you don't bother with it. But if a lion roar, then you will think, you will think twice. And so that um, the idea about buying and selling also in terms of economic sanctions. Many times now in the world, we are seeing Americans putting sanctions on other countries to all the world. Once they're not with them and they're not going along their line, we are seeing it not that they're putting sanctions. Um, of course, even with this, in this pandemic, what, what, is, what is happening? As America, as America goes within this pandemic, you see that the whole world are going off, um, going, um, off, off following them. And my last point, in light of America and what, and what could happen, Black Lives Matter, something that happened in America. And that took the whole world. So I'm saying that America have, in terms of the, 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 the power and the might, they have it in terms of fulfilling that prophecy. Thank you, Pastor Pastor Isa. Yes, Pastor. Well, first of all, I want to agree with you that there has to be a part two because there are some things we have not touched in Revelation. Um, it was 15, 16, 17. Eight, you know, we need to do that. So I probably wouldn't say from, from here it will be next week. Most likely it will be. But um, to answer your question, I think yes. I want to share close by, by sharing a, a statement from the former president, Barack Obama. I made on, um, on May 28, 2014. The president said this, that... <coughs> The United States is, former President Barack Obama, the United States is and remains the one indispensable nation that has been true for the century past and it will be true for the century to come. The former president said America remains the one. I, I'm not sure even if he understood exactly what he was saying, but that is prophetic. America remains the one. There is not another nation as powerful as America. As I said, you know, even the Americans get a little insy about China, but that's just a little economic power. But America remains, is, yes, we, we refer to them as the world police. Th that's what they are. America does it. She has the power. Um, you know, Kim Jong-un can fire a bomb here and there, but America has the power to do anything anywhere in the world. And the world, the rest of the world listens. And more and more, it will exert its power as we see what's unfolding, um, you know, um, right now, right now, even, even, even as we get ready to change pres the presidency. Um, so I, I think clearly America has the dominance. And we may have to, as I said, we may have to, con we have to continue. Yes, thank you so much, Pastor Palmer and Pastor Isaac for being with us today. Um, we did discuss a solid topic, and Pastor Isaac did share that we would do a, a part two. Thank you so much for being with us, for viewing, for listening to, um, to us um, today, and actually studying with us. Because I believe some of you, while we call a text, you turned your pages of your Bibles and you read with us. I would ask you for two things. Number one to share the link and let a friend know that we would be rebroadcasting this program this evening and they need to watch this program because they need to be blessed. Also, we'll be back here next week Tuesday at 11.30. Please share the link and tell a friend because we want to share this information with those that we love, we care about because the world is about to end but God's people need to be ready. May God bless you and Pray. see you next week Tuesday as we study together. Pray. To invite you to our massive virtual campaign, the Good News Gospel Explosion Karu Impact. It involves 27 islands across the Caribbean. I want you to come and hear the good news of Jesus Christ. I want you to hear how he loves you. I want you to hear how you can be saved. I want you, hey, I got so many things for you, you just can't miss it. So I invite you and your family, I invite you and your friends. Come and join us.